everybody, this is Jacob and Joseph from RoboFlow, here today to talk about computer vision in the healthcare and medicine industry. So Joseph, what are some of the things you're seeing that uh, people are doing in the healthcare and medicine industry? Well, for starters, let's talk about why you might want to use computer vision in healthcare and medicine. And if you think about it, the goal is to basically improve the quality of care and reduce the cost of that care. Uh, and if you can increase the number of patients that you can cover, um, all the better. And so there's all parts of healthcare and medicine everywhere from discovery and R&D of new medications to patient delivery. And everything in between that's affected and can be improved with computer vision. So let's talk about specifics. So for example, in research and development, there's computer vision use cases for doing things like cell counting. So there was a user actually on, on RoboFlow that was doing cancer research at a Danish university, and they wanted to identify when uh, neutrophils were, were activated, a specific part of the uh, white blood cell. And counting all of these hundreds of neutrophils was a really time-consuming, slow, arduous process that slowed research and delayed and made it such that um, you know, it took 40 to 60 hours between trial runs. By building a model that identifies what a neutrophil looks like, that process became less than 30 seconds. Uh, you run the experiment, neutrophils become visualized, you have a model count all of them, and you can see which part of the cell was activated in response to some given uh, medicine or drug or compound. Um, and then maybe even further down the supply chain of, from R&D to the production of those drugs. We've had users on RoboFlow do things like um, when a given product is produced, make sure that it is compliant and up to snuff with the quality assurance in supply chain and production. Uh, we've talked about computer vision and manufacturing before. The same sorts of considerations uh, apply, making sure that you know, the, the goods are produced in a way that the maker intended for them to be, that the supply of each of those input raw materials is, is correct, um, and Basically, along the supply chain, you can think about it, how visual of a process it is to quality assure and make sure that products that are being produced are correct. Um, and then maybe even one step further, when it gets into the hands of hospitals uh, or care providers more generally, there's a need for uh, diagnoses, a need for um, uh, uh, distribution that you can be far more precise. So in the realm of diagnoses, there's been an increase of using vision to augment and improve uh, radiology uh, or radiologist work. So for example, actually, during the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, when there was a huge dearth of tests, um, there was actually an open data set that's still available on RoboFlow. And we had a lot of users building and working on identifying what does the presence of COVID-19 look like in chest scans versus pneumonia versus Middle East respiratory syndrome versus a healthy chest? And in a place where you, I mean, think back to the beginning of the pandemic, we were really limited in testing infrastructure. And so triaging and using those tests uh, for the population that you most want to uh, serve, you know, you could do an initial chest scan without using mm -hmm. a specific COVID-19 test. And if it comes up clean that they don't even have pneumonia or they don't have anything that looks like Middle East respiratory syndrome, then that person can be, um, you know, we can use that test for someone where there's greater uncertainty. Um, or even skin lesions. Actually, one of the very famous initial examples in computer vision in healthcare, even actually more generally, was in 2017, a paper from a machine learning researcher at Google who didn't have any healthcare expertise, actually. And they made an application that identifies if a skin lesion is cancerous more accurate than the world's leading dermatologists. And that was groundbreaking because they could also load that into a mobile app. And so now we're not only talking about the healthcare providers being more efficient, but the democratization, individual consumers and patients being able to identify and see if they're being, um, uh, see if there's a malady to, to consider. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I mean, I, I can keep going down the patient yeah. delivery chain, but. Healthcare and medicine is one of those places where the impacts are, can be felt are so immediate and there's just such a plethora of them that it's, it's really exciting. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think maybe one, one important point to emphasize there now too is 
that, you know, like in radiology and maybe the skin lesion project, like it was, it was really kind of computer vision researchers that were pushing the state of what is possible. But now, you know, with the, with the state of technology, anyone can bring their own data set to identify and diagnose things um, anywhere from the dental industry to like you were talking about scanning for skin lesions or anything that you, you want to automate in your processes, you know, it is, it is potential to do for just, you know, someone who has, has the, the data set there to, to teach the model to identify these things. Um, and then another thing I'm thinking about is oftentimes with um, these sort of um, considerations around healthcare and medicine and um, private data, you know, that, that's kind of an issue that people think a lot about. Um, you know, it's, it's, I'm going to be taking this data, I'm going to be passing it into this model, and how do you think about compliance around security in healthcare and medicine? Yeah, so as you mentioned, in healthcare, you're often dealing with highly sensitive individual data on patient health um, and private health and, for, and PHI that, you know, there's uh, rightfully so a number of regulations that ensure that people can have their data privately protected. Um, and ensuring that you're HIPAA compliant, that you know, data is not inappropriately shared about someone's healthcare status without their explicit consent, and that data is stored in HIPAA compliant ways. Um, and these are all considerations that, uh, well, at RoboFlow, we think pretty carefully about being built on top of HIPAA compliant infrastructure, ensuring that we abide by uh, terms and regulations in place that protect user data. I mean, in fact, even in the non, even in non healthcare images, any data that someone uploads to our platform still belongs to their to them and is not publicly shared at all. It remains private to their account. And all of our infrastructure by default is HIPAA compliant for where the data is stored. But then when we engage with healthcare customers, you often want to sign agreements, uh, business associates agreements, they're called BAA, to basically assure that you can um, demonstrate the level of compliance of unauthorized access or any potential breaches or data is being stored or deletion requests, all these sorts of considerations that are essential to ensuring that uh, data is being taken care of and that user privacy is being respected. So these are uh, considerations that if you're an individual, I mean, you, you mentioned earlier, there's this, there's this <clears throat> impressive movement where there's this democratization where anyone can start to think about you know, researchers, um, maybe, I don't know, I was talking to a, an ENT doctor, ear, nose, throat doctor, who uh, had his own idea where he wanted to use images that were taken from ears to help parents at home, particularly moms of young children, he was mentioning, who their children would be quite upset and distraught with like an ear issue. And they want to use these at home ways to like take an image, but there's no expertise of, you know, a parent knowing what to do with that information. So he was building a tool that allows um, parents at home to snap those images and then get a diagnosis that says something like, you know, you do need to see a doctor or no, this is not particularly serious or, hey, we can't tell. You should err on the side of caution perhaps and, and come in and see, see a doctor. And I think what's important is that when you think about use cases like that, being able to use a platform that is basically handling these concerns for you so that you can be in a spot to focus on providing value to the patient or the customer or whomever, um, and that your data can be safe, secure, and stored is, is really important. Um, and then also with the larger uh, customer side of, you know, we work with, as you know, Fortune 50 uh, healthcare company where this is a similar concern and ensuring that we have the um, protections and, and regulatory compliance in place to respect and ensure data is secure. Definitely, definitely, and that 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 is an extremely important part of the process. I think to to keep yeah, in mind. I think that's right. I think that's right. Um, you know, we talked about a lot of use cases that are really specific to you know cells, research, diagnoses. I think another place to kind of think about is also the entire like patient provider network, like insurers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I know that you have actually a lot of experience in in this this domain. I mean, could you talk us through some examples of where you would see healthcare improving the insurance workflow, or excuse me, computer vision improving the healthcare insurance workflow? Yeah, certainly. I mean, that's that's kind of a whole another side of things where your the primary focus is actually on documents and, and text and automatic 
uh, scanning of things. And so you can use computer vision technologies to be automating some of these processes where you would normally have you know, a person going through scanning and extracting information. You can build systems that automatically scan these documents, extract information, and then pipe them down, down mm. the flow to the next, next thing that um, you, you need to apply them to. Hmm. So that'd be things like looking for if a document was signed mm -hmm. or like finding maybe like a, a phone number or an address in a document. Yep, yep. Uh, or maybe identifying which type of document it is and triaging mm -hmm. it off here. Um, these, these are all sorts of things you can do to kind of speed up and automate your, your processes. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, so um, if I thought about like projecting out computer vision in healthcare and what's, what's going to happen, I mean, I think there's going to be sort of these quiet change there's gonna be some that are like quiet changes that the you know everyday consumer might not immediately see but will uh, feel in the improved care and ideally at lower costs as these technologies come online things like better medicines from R&D and things like this but then there's also gonna be more visible ways that we're seeing improvements with the democratization of mm -hmm. you know the lesion uh, scanning application and other ways where like at-home delivery I mean the rise of telemedicine creates a whole new ability category for uh, you know, video, visual, image, data yeah. to be able to um, uh, provide raw materials from vision models to help reduce the error and increase efficiency and keep costs low as, as a part of it. And so I think we're going to start to see that as uh, patients and, and also as those that are in the vision industry. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And I, I think the, the biggest change, you know, is the, like we were mentioning that, you know, no longer will this be technology that's only held in the hands of researchers, but rather everyone in the medical industry is going to find use cases that they can apply vision to in their their own in their own way and their own with their own specific custom custom task like scanning the inner ear, yeah, or areas that were previously underlooked but now can be tackled. Yeah, and I think that's sort of what's different about about what we're building is our our thinking is there's these domain experts who know a lot about. What does a neutrophil look like? What does cysts look like in images? What does a properly produced vaccine look like yeah. if we're quality assuring and making sure the amount of liquid in the stopper on the syringe is correct? And we, we would never know. And we wouldn't know. But, but we, we want to empower them. Exactly. So yeah. if you empower the person that has that domain expertise to use vision, because they have ideas, they're like, hmm, wow, if I'm doing this level of visual inspection. Um, I mean, I was, I was, another person I was talking to that, that just kind of inspired me to think about this was like doing surgical precision. like basically using computer vision to see where you might want to make your initial incision, which is especially important for, for new doctors and experienced doctors alike. Of like, imagine you have an x-ray and then you use computer vision to identify where on the patient you're going to make that incision, then maybe you project or even use augmented reality to demonstrate where that incision should be, right? And it's, it's those ideas where like someone came to me with that idea that was in the medical field, where I was like, yeah, I wouldn't even thought about that, but that makes a ton of sense. And so our goal is basically to provide a platform and tool chain that allows those with the domain expertise to apply those, those capabilities. Um, so, I mean, for those that are thinking about these issues or want help getting started, of course, reach out. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the Roboflow YouTube channel for tips, tricks, and computer vision, ways computer vision is changing industries like healthcare and medicine, and all sorts of new ways that you should be using vision for your domain problems. Thanks so much.